Wars to fight for the right and to build the nation's might and the army goes rolling along. Proud of all we have done, fighting till the battle's won, and the army goes rolling along. Then it's high, high, hey, the army's on its way, count off the cadence loud and strong. Two, three, for wherever we go, you will always know that the army goes rolling along. Keep it rolling, first to fight for the right, and to build the nation's might, and the army goes rolling along. Proud of all we have done, fighting till the battle's won, and the army goes rolling along. Then it's high, high, hey, the army's on its way, count off the cadence loud and strong. Two, three, for wherever we go, you will always know that the army goes rolling along. What is happening, ladies and gentlemen? This is Tiger War Eagle 14 coming at you with another prediction video. This is actually going to be the last regular season uh, game of the weekend um, of the year for college football, and it's and it's all coming down fittingly to one of college football's greatest rivalries of all time. The Army Black Knights and the Navy Midshipmen will battle it out at Lincoln Financial Field in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And also, we're going to be predicting some bowl games as well. Uh, we'll do the. And here's how we're going to do this. By the way, I'll introduce KJ3 in a second. But here's the plan: we're going to be predicting the Army Navy game, and then we're going to predict the bowl games. But we're not. We're going to wait for New Year's Six until we get close to that date. So for this prediction video, we're just going to go over some of the smaller market bowl games. But anyway, joining me to make the predictions lower is K yeah lower tier. Joining me to predict the games is KJ3 Reactions. How you doing, KJ? I'm doing great, man. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, it's great to have you on, like always. Uh, he's been, you've been with us all year long. Uh, I guess you could say uh, the committee really uh, were thankful that yep. Oregon and Georgia and everyone else you know, did their job. Like Oregon won, then Georgia lost. It made it easier for them. But what did you think of the uh, top four? Was the, was the committee taking easy very well? I think the committee with Oregon beating Utah, man, uh, all all you, all Oklahoma had to do was just take care of Baylor, and man, that game went to overtime, but that was a very quick overtime. I'll tell you that I was. Out. I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this. I was listening to the game on radio on Sirius XM Radio. I was in Birmingham. I was about to go to the UAB basketball game and. I can tell you this. That, I mean, the game in overtime. I'll tell you this. I think I, it don't matter. Whoever would have won that game, I think could have made it into the playoff because Georgia was going to lose, and of course Utah lost. So I bet you whoever won that Big Twelve title game is going to get into the playoff regardless of what happened. Um, but anyway, it pretty much yeah. faded that way with you know both back twelve teams having two losses and Oklahoma having. One loss, and that's the other Power Five conference champion. So yeah, yeah, the winner of that basically got the number four spot because Georgia got thoroughly embarrassed. Yeah, do you think Georgia should have fell more just because they got dismantled? Yes, I'm surprised. And I'll tell you why? Florida at least made it a game in Baton Rouge. We put up 28. Mm -hmm. Georgia, it looked like as soon as Georgia did not respond. On their opening drive by getting a touchdown, it just it, it looked like all the air and all the bark went out of the dogs because yeah. it, it was just one little snowball mistake after another, and soon before you knew it, it was a three possession game. They were in too big of a hole. Yeah, LSU's I mean, defense is not that great. Everyone, yeah, they played good there, but Georgia made them look really good. LSU's defense is not that. Great. Yeah, we're gonna yeah, and as I said, we will predict the New Year's Six in the weeks ahead. But for today, we're gonna be predicting the Army Navy game and of course the uh, lower tier bowl game. Speaking of Army and Navy game, uh, it's coming up this Saturday, it's two o'clock Central Time. Army is five and seven. They're not gonna make it to a bowl game, I I believe so, for the first time since what 2013, 2014. 
So that's kind of a shock. I mean, Army basically lost a lot of good players over the past few years. But they still have a chance to, uh, I mean, uh, pretty much their big national championship, a quote-unquote national championship or bowl game is this one. Uh, of course, this is what the seniors want. They want to go out. Uh, the freshman class that was here a couple years ago, they want to end their time at Army by going undefeated against the Navy midshipmen. Right now, the Black Knights have a three-game win streak over Navy. Navy's going to their bowl game, or they're going to the Liberty Bowl to play Kansas State. But first, they have to get by Army to get at least a 10-win season, maybe an 11-win season, should they win their bowl game and this one coming up Saturday. But KJ3, I mean, you told me before one time, uh, you were an Air Force cadet, were you? I uh, was not Air Force cadet. Oh, not cadet, but... Out in Colorado Springs where the Air Force Academy is, and I was able to go to an Air Force Navy game one year. Oh, okay. So, um, yeah, of course, this is what everyone calls America's game, and it's fitting that it's the last regular season game of the season. It's not officially a postseason game, despite it being taking place one week after conference championship weekend, but... Uh, let's pick this game. Army or Navy? Who wins it, KJ? I mean, you, you gotta love that Army finally was able to beat Navy three years ago, but I believe this three-year run is going to come to an end, and you hit on it. I mean, Army not going bowling. They're just playing for pride. Mm -hmm. And Navy, they're, you know, they're 10, 11 wins. Like, man, they are a pretty decent team this year. Yeah. I just see talent taking over and Navy coming out, breaking that streak so their seniors can go out with their first win against Army. Yeah, if you're a Navy midshipman, you do not want to go. I mean, the worst thing that could happen, I mean, a bad, thing, a bad thing that could happen to you if you're a Navy guy is if you lose to Army. The worst thing that could happen is you do not win one game during your time. Yeah, exactly. But um, you know what? I mean, as much as I have respect for Navy, I mean, I have respect for, for Army, Navy, and Air Force. I mean, it's it, it's our future soldiers going into these academies, and then four years later, they're on their way to, you know, serving our country around the world and everything. But, I mean, Army, look, I think the senior class wants to get out of here, uh, wants to get out of West Point with four straight wins over Navy. I mean, th this team, yes, they've had their ups and downs this year, a lot of downs. But I think this year they're going to end their season with an up. So, and because, look, my family, I had an uncle, my uncle served in the Army, and both my grandfathers served in the Army. So, I have to do it, man. I got to go for the Army Black Knights. We're going to make it four in a row over the, over the Navy midshipmen. Uh, whoever wins this game, I mean, our, actually, no, may the best team win, I'm sure, because I have a great, like I said, great deal of respect for all three academies, Army, Navy and Air Force. Um, by the way, Navy is a 10-point favorite heading into Philadelphia, Pennsylvania at Lincoln Financial Field. So that is your um, that's your only, <laughs> pretty much the only regular season game of the weekend. Def obviously it is. Um, let's go ahead and yep. get to our first bowl games of the 2019-20 uh, season. Um, December the 20th. You got the Makers Wanted Bahamas Bowl. Anybody dreams of going to the Bahamas just to have a nice vacation. Um, the Buffalo Bulls and the Charlotte 49ers, who out of nowhere all of a sudden is making their first bowl appearance in program history. This program began, what, 2010, 2011? I could be wrong on one of those numbers. But um, a long time coming for the 49ers. They are 75. Both teams are 75, so... Well, what do you think, Cage? By the way, Buffalo is a five-point favorite, but what do you think? Does Charlotte get their first ever bowl win in their first trial, or does Buffalo um, deny Charlotte? These games are tricky because the fact that you hit on it, it is in a destination. Um, it's a destination bowl. You're, you're in the Bahamas. Yes, Hurricane Dorian was there, you know, three months ago, but you're still in the Bahamas. Like, a lot of these guys can, could consider this as a vacation, especially coming yes. from Buffalo, New York, and Charlotte, North Carolina. Yeah. <laughs> so you just don't know. <coughs> it's very hard to pick. I mean, I I'm going to have to give the edge to the team that's never been bowling before. Wow. They, they have something to play for. They want to come out with their first bowl appearance and a first bowl win. I don't think they're just content on being there at a bowl. I think they're going to go out and try their hardest to get a W. Meanwhile, the other team, they may just be happy to be yeah. 
Yes, that's true. I mean, uh, we, I mean, it's kind of warm and cold in, in Alabama where I'm from. But I'm, you know what? I'm going with Charlotte too because here's an interesting stat: the past couple of years that this Bahamas Bowl has been in, in its existence, you have a team win their first ever bowl game. I think the first one was Western Kentucky, and in that crazy game against Central Michigan, where they're down like what three touchdowns to five minutes uh-huh. ago. Um, let's see, uh, 2015. I'm trying. I can't remember what 2015 was. UAB, they went to that bowl game, but they didn't get their first bowl win. Old Dominion got their first bowl win down there. Um, uh, who, who was it last year? I think it was Old Dominion last year. I could be wrong. But um, anyway, the past couple of years that this bowl game has been in, in its existence, um, there's been a team getting their first ever bowl win since joining the FBS. So I think that's an interesting stat to look at. That's why I'm going with the Charlotte 49ers. Let's move on to uh, six thirty Central Time. The Tropical Smoothie Cafe Frisco Bowl. I mean, I what they, a name. I mean, I, I these names, these sponsor names, the past couple of years have been so weird. But anyway, Utah State and Kent State will battle it out at the home of the FCS National Championship game, Toyota Stadium, in Frisco, Texas, which is also going to be the home of the XFL's practice team. I don't know what the heck that is. But anyway, Kent State Golden Flashes, Utah State Aggies. Uh, who's going to win it? By the way, um, by the way, Utah State's a nine-point favorite. Utah State's the heavy favorite, but my dad was born in the Kent State University Hospital, so oh, wow, okay. I have to go with Kent State on this one for family reasons. Oh, that's that, that's a good reason to go with Kent State. I'm gonna go. I'm actually gonna go with Utah State because I mean, uh, I don't know why. I mean, they are a favorite, obviously, but I just think Utah State is a better team when you look at them on paper. Uh, Kent State, obviously, this year six and six. Uh, I don't know much about Kent State other than they played Auburn, so I'm just gonna go with Utah State. Saturday, December twenty first, is the Where's new. Where's that bowl even located? Uh, it's uh, it's in Frisco, Texas. It's just outside of 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 Dallas. Okay. But anyway, yeah. <clears throat> Saturday, December twenty first, one o'clock Central Time, Central Michigan Chippewas. Um, taking on San Diego State at the New Mexico Bowl. San Diego State is a four-point favorite. Who wins it, Aztecs or Chippewas? As a Florida Gator fan, I cannot root for Jim McElwain. Can't do it. I'm rooting. I'm pulling for San Diego State. Wait, they J- are the better team. They are the favorite. Wait, Jim McElwain. What? Jim McElwain. He is the Central Mission head coach. Really? Yes. That's where he went. Yeah, I know. Wow. He almost beat Miami this year in Miami, which is the crazy thing. I just I can't root for him, him being a former coach and what he did to our program. I didn't uh, I San Diego State. I did not know that he is now the head coach of Central Michigan. Lord, I I wonder where he went. I thought he retired. But anyway, um uh, did Central Michigan win their championship, their conference title, or did Miami of Ohio beat him? Central Michigan. I'm looking that up right now. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think anybody cared about the MAC championship. Um, by the way, uh, San Diego State. Oh, really? Wow. Um, well, then I got to go with San Diego State. I mean, this team looks really good on paper, but you never know. Sometimes, if you look in the history of bowl games, when a team that has a has the worst record than the team that has a better record, normally the worst team gets the better edge, but... Um, but still, I'm going to go with San Diego State in this one. Uh, here's another team making their first ever bowl appearance. Out of nowhere, the Liberty University Flames in the FBC Mortgage Cure Bowl against the Georgia Southern Eagles. Georgia Southern is a six-point favorite heading into this game. Uh, and as I said, Liberty, what a year. Liberty in their, uh, what is it, second year in the FBS. It's now officially their second year. Last year was their first, but they couldn't qualify for a bowl game. So, um, or a conference title. But anyway, Liberty, uh, with first-year head coach Hugh Freeze, a recognizable name in the SEC, taking yeah, on the Georgia really Southern Eagles. Up. Yeah. That's another SEC coach that, well, one of us didn't know where he went. But anyway, who wins it, Liberty or Georgia Southern? I'm going to go with the upset on this. I'm going to go with Liberty. Is it because, um, is it because of Georgia Southern Florida? You know it, man. <laughs> running team, but Liberty's got a quarterback. He's got 26 touchdowns to five picks and threw for almost 3,400 yards on the season. And, you know, not to mention they had a running back go over 1,300 yards and they had a yeah. for my goodness, Hickinson, 165 carries, like, 
Yeah. 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 Um. I, you know what? I'm gonna go. They have an explosive offense under Hugh Freeze, and also yeah. Yes. George Southern. They yeah. Upset us. Yeah, I'm gonna agree. I'm gonna agree. You know what? I'm gonna agree with you. I'm gonna go with the upset. I love Liberty. I do. Well, I know. I mean, I like Liberty from the win, and also because I have a uh, William Byron Liberty University Chevrolet um, diecast car that I've got. Just because it's a college football team on a NASCAR vehicle. I don't know if you guys saw it. I'll put it up here one more time on the camera. There you see it, Liberty University cool. Flames. But uh, yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm going to go with the Flames on this one. I like that name, the Flames and Liberty. Uh, God bless America, I guess. Um, <laughs> 2.30 Central Time, um, the SMU Mustangs. This is a battle of 10 win teams, by the way. The SMU Mustangs heading to the Cherry Bundy Boca Raton Bowl to take on the Florida Atlantic Owls. Despite Florida Atlantic being the home, literally, this is in Florida Atlantic's home no, stadium. stadium. Yes. Yeah, home stadium at Florida Atlantic University. But despite that, SMU is a three-point favorite over the hometown Florida Atlantic Owls. Uh, of course, Lane Kiffin. Of course, Lane Kiffin uh, has left Florida Atlantic. I don't know if he's going to coach in the bowl game, but he has, uh, in my mind, has left Florida Atlantic to go take the job at Oxford for the Ole Miss Rebels. So, um, who's going to get the better end to their season? Both teams, by the way, great seasons. But really, for SMU, I mean, what a year. I mean, I bet you that I mean, they really wish they could have beaten Memphis and maybe get to their conference title game. But, I mean, they won't. Yeah, but and with that out of the way, who do you think is going to win it, SMU or Florida Atlantic? I mean, that just, just looking on paper, SMU has a quarterback, 33 touchdowns, 9 picks but 3,600 yards, a running back who had over 1,200 yards, a receiver had over 1,100 yards. You know, like, this SMU team, very, very you know, balanced on offense. And FAU, them being at home, it's a home game. I mean, yes. are they really going to get up and play and, and try to put their, their <coughs> minds into bowl mindset playing in their home stadium? Meanwhile, SMU is having a great season considering where their program was to where they are now. Lane Kiffin's out the door. So are they really going to like want to play as hard as seniors when their head coach has already left? I'm going with SMU in this one, and I think it should be more than just three points. I see this being a blowout win. Wow. wow. Um, you know what? I am going to agree. I will say SMU. I will pick SMU, but it's going to be closer than the experts think. I really do believe so, despite it being only a three-point spread. Uh, 4.30 Central Time, not too far from where I live. Basically, you just got to go down several ro back roads on a highway, and you're right there at uh, the Ray – at the I think they call it the Ray Con – I think it's still called the Raycom Camellia Bowl. But anyway, the Camellia Bowl down at the Crampton Bowl in Montgomery, Alabama. The Florida International University Panthers are heading up here to take on the Arkansas State Red Wolves. Uh, of course, Blake Anderson this, earlier this year, of course, um, losing his wife to cancer. I think it was yeah, breast cancer. So um, uh, just, uh, it, it, it had been an emotional season for Blake Anderson for sure and for the Arkansas State Red Wolf family. Uh, of course, uh, I'm going to say it. Uh, save the Tatas, but um, but uh, who, who do you think's gonna win it, FIU or Arkansas State? I'm gonna go with Arkansas State because of one man, Omar Bayless. The, he is a senior wide receiver, six three. He is second with a thousand four hundred seventy three yards, second in FBS in touchdowns with sixteen. I mean, this guy is an absolute beast. Quarterback has 2,500 yards and 1,400 are to Bayless. So, good luck stopping Bayless. That guy's going to be in the NFL. Arkansas State's going to win this one. I'm actually going to agree with you, too. Um, I'm going to go with Arkansas State because of what you said, but also because of Blake Anderson. I mean, this guy has had a tough year. Uh, of course, like I said, losing his wife that to breast team cancer. That plays for their coach. Yes, man. I love when a team plays for their coach, just you know, over a personal tragedy like that. But anyway, I'm gonna go with the Red Wolves because of Blake Anderson and uh, whoever that guy, uh, whatever his name is, you just said. Omar. But yes, him, Omar Bayless. But I'm gonna go with Red Wolves as well. Um, Six thirty Central Time. This is the, um, I guess you could call it the um, the uh, uh, Chris Peterson Bowl. 
the um, Boise yeah. State Broncos and the Washington Huskies. This will be uh, Chris but Peterson's Chris final. Peterson, he's not there anymore. Although they said he was going to coach, I heard I heard that in the article that or read in the article this uh, he will coach. Um, I uh, I saw it somewhere, but I'm sure he's going to coach in the game. But as of right now, um, from what I heard, this will be Chris Peterson's final game, fittingly against the team that he led to a few BCS Bowl victories. Um, most notably that 2007 Fiesta Bowl against Oklahoma, the Statue of Liberty play, of course, that proposal on the sideline. Uh, a fitting way to send off Coach Peterson with two of his teams that he coached to several bowl games that, of course, uh, one playoff semifinal appearance. Of course, that was against Alabama, but uh, it resulted in a loss. But um, How do you see this game being played out with Chris Peterson's last game? Will he get that one last win, or will his old team uh, get the best of him? In the, in, in the, by the way, in the uh, mid, mids... I mean, Mitsubishi Motors Las Vegas Bowl. Washington's a four-point favorite. Uh, you were right on that. This is Chris Peterson's last game, and it's like you said, no better team for him to face off than the team that he made a name for himself with. I'm gonna go and say that Jake Eason and Washington's gonna get up and play for their coach. Yeah, I'm so much to play for on wanting their coach to beat his former team. That being said, Boise State is a good team. Only one loss on the season. And you know them. There are not many people left from that Chris Peterson staff. Yeah. But they're going to get a, want to get a win against their old coach. Wait. But I just see Washington having too much emotion invested in this not to win. Yeah, I mean, you hit it right on the head. I mean, Boise State, I mean, even though they're without Chris, most of Chris Peterson's staff from like years ago or – or whatever. I mean, they still have one loss. That is not bad of a year. I mean, it feels like Boise State should be in the Pac-12 or should be in the in the uh, Mountain. Well, not Mountain West. So they are in the Mountain West. I don't know what I'm thinking, but they should be in the in the Pac-12. I mean, this team every year, year out, year in, year out, they're very good, and they should deserve to get into a Power Five conference very soon. But uh, I'm gonna agree with you. Uh, I'm gonna go with the Washington Huskies just because I like Chris Peterson. Of course, he coached against Auburn last season. In Atlanta, but I mean, I, I assume he's sad. Uh, hopefully, this is not the end of the road for him. Maybe he'll get another job somewhere. Maybe he'll uh, be in a coordinator somewhere. But I hope this is not the end so of the road. Bad, but that's definitely one of the coaches that left a mark on college football. Yes, definitely. Small, small guys out there. Uh, the last game of what is it, December twenty first? Yeah, December twenty first. This is the last game of December twenty first. The twentieth uh, ranked, twelve and one, Appalachian State Mountaineers taking on the UAB Blazers and the RNL Carriers and Orleans. But look, UAB. I mean, I went to go watch the uh, a watch party in Birmingham at some, a place called Iron City Grill. Let me tell you what, the place was. They had a lot of fan, uh, UAB fans cheering for them after the first play. I mean, it was game over. UAB just got shellacked by Florida Atlantic. I mean, when I mean shellacked, I mean they got their butts whipped against FAU. But um, and the spread right now says App State a seventeen point favorite over the UAB Blazers. That um, be the biggest spread because I know the Florida Virginia one at fourteen is the third. Well, game. also you got this game. The well, also you got UCF. They're seventeen point favorite over Marshall. We're going to predict that game here in just a minute. I, you got to respect from what UAB has done this year, but man, they just like you just said, poor performance. And they're going up against a team that's just that – App State's a good team. They're a good team. The 17-point yep. favorites for a reason. They that deserve it. It will necessarily be a three-score game. <coughs> I think they'll be a little bit closer. But yes. App State's just got the talent. All they got to do is just have that mentality to show up and play football, and they're going to get the win here. I'll tell you what, man. I talked to this UAB fan at Iron City Grill. He said they need to put Tyler Johnson in a lot more. I mean, the kick and throw, and he can run – I think he's one of those mobile quarterbacks that you see every now and then. But, um, man, I... Man, he's the future there. Yes, um, but here's the thing, man. I, 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 After taking a shellacking like that from FAU, I cannot pull for UAB in this one. I've got to go with the Appalachian State Mountaineers. I mean, sorry UAB fans are probably watching this. I mean, I had a great time at the watch party last week, or this past Saturday, but, man... After taking the beating like that, I cannot pick you to win this game. I'm going to go with the App State Mountaineers, and they're going to get their 13th win. Who knows? Maybe next year they might get to a New Year's Six Bowl. I don't know if that's possible, but we'll never know. But um, Monday, December 23rd, um, UCF and Marshall in the Bad Boy Mowers Gasparilla Bowl. 
Uh, UCF, as I said, is a 17-point favorite over the Marshall Thundering Herd. Um, uh, your national champions from, like, uh, two years ago, I, uh, oh, your oh, mythical, yeah. mythical national champions two years ago are going up against against the We Are Marshall Thundering Herd. Uh, so who wins it, UCF or Marshall? UCF, let's face it, ever since they lost a game and to Pitt. another game, they've just not had a good year. Yeah. Marshall's not a really good team. UCF's got a to play for here, a lot of pride. Mm -hmm. UCF's going to get the win here easily. Yeah, I'm gonna agree with you. I'm gonna go with the UCF, but look, you got. I mean, I like Marshall because I mean, I love the movie We Are Marshall, so that's all I'm gonna say on that. But I'm gonna go with UCF. Um, I think they're gonna get their tenth win of the year. What is it? Is it gonna be three years in a row that UCF's won ten games? That is remarkable, even without Scott Frost. Of the season, yes, that is. Yeah, uh, let's head on to Christmas Eve, Tuesday, December twenty fourth. While while everybody's yeah, unwrapping. Why? While everybody's unwrapping their presents or singing um, you, you, um, uh, you Lang Ties or whatever Christmas tune it is, uh, Christmas caroling, uh, you got the Hawaii Rainbow Warriors hosting the BYU. I'm going to say hosting because this is literally in their stadium in I the mean, SoFi Hawaii, in Hawaii Bowl. Is Hawaii. <laughs> I mean, I think one year they were playing in the, whole, in the Hawaii Bowl and they got their butts kicked. I can't remember. I think, I think they won. I might be wrong. But BYU is a one-and-a-half point favorite heading into this game. So who wins it, uh, BYU or Hawaii? I'd just say Hawaii. They're the more balanced team, man. It's, you just got to look at their numbers. They have a back that almost went for 1,000, receiver over 1,000, and just it's consistent B quarterback play from BYU's Wilson quarterback. Uh, I just see Hawaii getting the win here. Yeah, I'm going to agree with you. I'm going to go with Hawaii, but for a different reason. I love what they do with their pregame thing uh, their, when they get ready to go to war. Haka. The, the Haka. Uh, the, the beating on their – I love that. I'm, I'm going with Hawaii just because of that um, So and because of their home game. Um, of course, college football is going to take a break on Christmas Day, but they'll be back on Thursday, December 26th for two more games. The Louisiana Tech Bulldogs, basically this is their home game, another one, another – um, bowling game that features the home team, Louisiana Tech Bulldogs, going up against the Miami Hurricanes and the Walcons Independence Bowl at Shreveport, Louisiana. So, um, uh, Miami's a seven point favorite. Of course, the last time they played a Conference USA team, uh, the result was just awful. Um, they were getting beat, what, 17 0 against FIU at Marlins Park? I didn't know they were playing at Marlins Park, which is, by the way, the old Orange Bowl site. But, um, Who's going to win it, Louisiana Tech or Miami? I can't root for Miami. I'm sorry. <laughs> I've, I've seen them too much this year and just know how bad their offense is. I can't root for them going up against a team that's won nine wins on this. Yes. Yeah. All right. All right. I, I, I know Miami's the favorite here, but I can't do it. And I, I didn't even know that this is basically a home game for yes. La Tech. So I'm going to say La Tech on this. Miami's had a terrible year. I don't even know how they made a bowl with how bad of a year they had. Yeah, they I mean, stayed home. Yeah, I think they lost three, uh, three of the last three going into the end of the regular they season. They lost their first two. And, and they lost, by the way, and they, like I said, lost to Florida International on the old Orange Bowl. Imagine that. Miami losing on their old stopping grounds that bad to a, to a lower tier team? Florida State, Florida, and they lost. In Miami in the old Orange Bowl side. They've had a terrible year. Yeah. I'm going to go with La Tech. I mean, look. I, I, Manny Diaz. I mean, I know this is his first season. I mean, Ooh, I, I think I, I, th I think he's going to get it together next year. I, or who knows. Maybe next two or three years it'll, it'll get better. I'm not sure. I can't predict the future right. But anyway, I'm going to go with La By Tech. By the way, I, I had a tweet that I just I got to bring up because I tweeted it out earlier today. It's It's absolutely amazing. Miami's 2021 football class is down to eight commitments and up to six people who have decommitted from that class just because of how bad they've been this year. My gosh. And, 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 to, th that and to think that two years from now, um, they'll be playing against Alabama to start the season. It, I, I, I'm, I'm going to send my prayers to Miami, uh, especially for the next two years to come. But... Um, uh, with that out of the way, next game, the Pittsburgh Panthers going to play the uh, Eastern Michigan Eagles at the Quick Lane Bowl in Detroit, Michigan at Ford Field. 
Uh, who wins it, Pitt or Eastern Michigan? Uh, Pitt's an 11-point uh, favorite, by the way. Uh, I'm going to go with Pitt in this one. They uh, no, no specific reason. I mean, Eastern Michigan's got a good quarterback. And, uh, man, not to mention Kenny Pickett, he's been just inconsistent on the year. Ten touchdowns, nine interceptions. Not a great quarterback <coughs> rating, but I just think – Pitt's going to come out. They're, they're the favorite in this. Man, just leave it up to talent taking over yeah. in this one. I'm going to go with Pitt just because they shut the UCF fans up finally for once. Oh, that was right. so beautiful. Right. And uh, and oh, let me buy, let me say this, by the way, going back to the Independence Bowl, I'm going with LaTeX, by the way, in case I forgot to say it. But uh, several years ago, the Air Force Falcons played Georgia Tech in, in, in Shreveport. It, hey, it's fitting for Miami to go to that bowl game because it's a – it's the city I've been hearing things about uh, Shreveport. It's awful. It, it sucks. Hey, the Air Force Falcon. Normally, there's a, they have their own mascot. It's a Falcon, kind of like Auburn's War Eagle. But the yep. Falcon, he's like, like when they they usually release it, and he's like, man, this is my chance. I'm getting out of here. <laughs> they they had they had a they had a tracking sensor, and they tracked him, and they found him in downtown Shreveport on the uh, on a lamppost. And they, I bet you he, the Falcon was thinking, man, this is better than that bowl game. This is yeah, so I'm much better. <laughs> But I just had to get that out uh, real quick. I just that's what I was thinking. Uh, Friday, December twenty seventh, North Carolina taking on the Temple Owls in the Military Bowl, presented by Northrop Grumman. Uh, UNC is a five and a half point favorite. Uh, who wins it, Temple or North Carolina? Man, UNC has had an up and down year. Coming off, you know, early in the year they beat Miami, you know, but then again, Miami lost everyone, and then they yeah. almost beat Clemson. Yeah. Probably should have. Very winnable games this year. But this team, like we said earlier, you got to love a team that plays for their coach. And UNC plays for Mac Brown. All right. Yeah. Not to mention, they have a receiver and running back who are just shy of 1,000 yards. And, man, Sam Howell, that guy is a good quarterback as a freshman. All right. Yeah. 3,300 yards, 35 touchdowns, 7 interceptions. I don't know why people weren't talking about him. More than they were talking about Trevor Lawrence and his average year. Keep your eye out on Sam Howell in the future with Matt yeah. Brown and the UNC target. Is he? Is he? Well, I'm a Duke Blue Devil fan, but I'm saying watch out for UNC. Are you a Duke fan in basketball? In basketball. Oh, okay. Um, is Sam Howell a junior? I, I graduated from Duke. Oh, uh, okay. Cool. Cool. Is Sam Howell a junior or freshman? Really? Yes. So next year for Auburn and North Carolina will be a battle of sophomores. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm excited for that game. I'm actually going to try and purchase tickets for that game. It's going to be in Atlanta. I can't wait. I've been to that stadium one time, but that one time was just – it wasn't fun because UCF won. But anyway, um, I'm going to go with North Carolina just because, you know, I like Mac Brown and that they're going to be playing against Auburn next year in Atlanta. So I'm going to go with the Tar Heels because, I mean, and they played us in basketball, by the way, and baseball also. So, yeah. yeah um, In case I'm I didn't mention it, I think UNC is going to route this one. So. Yeah. All right. Um, 220 Central Time, New Era Pinstripe Bowl at Yankee Stadium. I've been to that stadium before to watch the Braves and Chipper Jones. Uh, the Michigan State Spartans will take on the Wake Forest team. This game might be good. I think Michigan State's a three-and-a-half point favorite over Wake Forest. This is probably going to be one of the best games of the bowl season right here. Michigan State and Wake Forest. Michigan State trying to just trying to get a great ending to the season, just trying to put this year behind them with a win in the bowl game. Wake Forest trying to end their season with a uh, and their great season. What a year for Wake Forest. I mean, this team ranked in the top 25 for for a few times until they got absolutely shellacked by Clemson. I mean, let's be honest. I really thought Wake Forest would upset them somehow, but, I mean, let's face it. I made that mistake picking them. But anyway, uh, who wins it, Wake Forest or Michigan State? I'm looking at this, and it's it's hard to predict. The better quarterback play you got to give to Wake. Um, Michigan State's a running team, man. The, their running back, Collins, has 201 carries, but he doesn't have 900 yards. It, it's hard to see this. I see the key of the game is for Wake Forest to stop the run. If they can stop the run, then they're going to get this. But Michigan State just depends on how good Wake Forest run defense is in this. But I got to give the edge to the better quarterback play. So I'm going to say Wake Forest in this one. All yeah, right. Set being three and a half point yeah. underdogs. I'm actually gonna go agree with you on this one. I mean, Wake Forest, what a year this team has had. Like I said, so I'm gonna go with the Demon Deacons on this one. 
uh, to beat the Spartans. Uh, the Academy Sports. Great game to watch. Oh, yeah, I'm really looking forward. I think, like I said, this might be the best bowl game of the bowl season. One of the best. Um, Oklahoma State and Texas A&M at the Academy Sports and Outdoors Texas Bowl. I, there have been rumors that it was going to be A&M and Texas battling in that game. I really hoped it would because I want to see these two play again. But unfortunately, we're going to get a Big 12 SEC reunion of Oklahoma State and Texas A&M. Uh, A&M's a five and a half point favorite. So who wins it, Aggies or Cowboys? This game has Texas A&M written all over it. For three reasons why. It's in the okay. one number number one. Uh, not even that. I mean, that that'll be reason number four. Okay. Number one, Texas likes to throw. And Oklahoma State, they're in the Big 12, which you know is notorious for having no pass defense. Texas A&M has five losses despite having to play Clemson, Alabama, LSU, Georgia. And Auburn. And Auburn. And those are all teams that are ranked. Yeah. And those are their five losses. They managed to get seven wins in a bowl in a respectable year. They had one of the toughest schedules in yep. the NCAA, if not the toughest, and still got seven wins. Hats off to Jimbo Fisher. Yeah. This game has A and M written all over it, man. They've had a brutal year, and they need to go out on a high note for just surviving this season. Yes. Um. I, and, and and let me say this too. I think if we got to say this, they have not beaten those, any of those ranked teams all year long. I think this game has A and M winning all over it, uh, written all over it. So with that said, I'm gonna go with the Aggies. I think they'll finally get their first win over a ranked team this year, and is and it's gonna come against the Cowboys of Oklahoma State with the mullet of Mike Gundy. Mike Gundy. Yes. Uh, the San Diego County Credit Union Holiday Bowl. The USC Trojans and the Iowa Hawkeyes. That game's at 7 o'clock Central Time. Iowa is a very close one-point favorite over the USC Trojans. Uh, who's going to win it, Iowa or USC? Let me ask you something. Do you think this is a must-win for Clay Helton? I, I'd say absolutely. I think so, too. I think he has to at least win the bowl game. To stay because on the hot seat. because I heard a because I at USC man you cannot be losing two three four games a year it's just like yeah. being at Florida you know it wasn't good enough for Muschamp wasn't good enough for McElwain we wanted them out you know they are yeah a flashy offense high scoring team and they want to be contending for their conference championship every year and yes they ain't getting it done so mm -hmm. I believe this is a must win but. I don't think he's going to get it. I think really? he's going to pull off the, the slight upset here, you know, one point. Uh, but I think the Iowa Hawkeyes, they're just the more physical team. And despite having three losses, they play in the Big Ten. They play some big boy teams. And I just I don't think Clay Helton's going to last. And USC, I don't think he's a great coach. I don't think he's the right fit for the job. I, I heard some. Should have like, kept Ed Ordron, be honest. I really imagine, imagine if he would have stayed. And and then here's the thing: they wouldn't know what in the world he's saying. <laughs> I mean, you don't ever have a rage. You don't ever have a Cajun coaching a team in California. You never have that. They're not gonna understand what he's saying. They're like, uh, what did he say? Look how how they say out it's there in California. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, um, I heard that after the game, after the victory over UCLA, I heard that they fired Helton. I'm like, wait, what? I, I didn't I I I I didn't think they ever fire him, but then they say it's not true. So I'm gonna disagree with what you said. I'm gonna go with USC because uh, I like Clay Hilton because he's a former Auburn guy. Uh, I like him. Uh, I really do think he's a good fit. He just needs to recruit. That's the thing. He needs to recruit and get all those guys out there in California and or uh, get them out of uh, uh well get them out of Utah or Oregon and send them on yeah, down here. That's it, man. With Herm Edwards building up Arizona State. The Pac-12 is just getting harder to recruit. Yeah, it's true. I mean, but anyway, I'm going to go with the Trojans in that one. Uh, the last game of, of December the 27th, Air Force Falcons and the Washington State Cougars, 9.15 Central Time at Chase Field, home of the Arizona Diamondbacks at Phoenix, Arizona. This is the Cheez-It Bowl, one of my favorite snacks. Uh, Air Force is a two-and-a-half-point favorite going into this game. Mike Leach... 
Will this be his final game of Washington State? Should somebody try to go after him? Yes, Mike Leach. He, he has proven that you know he's gotten his reputation back to the point to where a, a good enough school should come around and try to pick up him. You know, despite what happened with him at Texas Tech last time. Yeah, I, I think he's going to be leaving Washington State, and you know, it being against Air Force, man, former Air Force. Got to go with the Air Force on this one. Yeah, I'm a. Um, I don't think that I don't think Mike Leach is leaving Washington State. I mean, he's got he. I, I think he's got. I mean, he's building something over there. I mean, even though it's a six and six year, I mean, I, I guarantee you next year it'll be better. Um, maybe better than six and six. There'll be some nice jobs open up. Yeah, but the thing is, what job will be opening? I mean, I think Missouri is about to hire somebody, or they probably just hired somebody. Arkansas has got somebody. Sam Pittman, uh, Ole Miss just picked up Lane Kiffin. I don't know if he or USC or USC. One of those. One of those might open up. But as of right now, I'm saying Washington State is not going to let Mike Leach go. I mean, let's face it. He he brought him out from the ashes. I mean, Washington State out of nowhere, all of a sudden is now competing. I mean, like I said, the six and six year. But like I said, next year is going to get better. Or better than six and six. But um, I don't know. They're going to win the, the, against a team like Air Force, a tough, gritty team like Air Force. So I'm going to go with the Falcons in this one. Uh, of course, like I said, they're a two and a half point favorite. Uh, Don't get okay. me wrong, Anthony Gordon is a gunner, I'm leading the nation in yards. But yes, I think Air Force and their ground attack is going to be too much. Is he in? Is he? Will be Gordon as a senior his last game, so he will be. I mean, some NFL team is going to get him in this draft. But first, he's got to go serve for our country. I mean, that's also one of the more important things too. Um, is he in contention, by the way, for one of those quarterback awards? Uh, Anthony Gordon. I mean, he should be in contention for the Davy O'Brien. He has to be. If you thousand say, yards, forty-five touchdowns, sixteen picks. He has to. He's uh, got to be. I, I I'm gonna have to look at it later. I don't I don't know if it when the college football awards are gonna be, but I imagine it's gonna be before. Gardner Mishu went out there and he set a single or single game record earlier this year. So. Oh yeah, that's true. Uh, of course, this next bowl game you see right here on the screen that is the Cotton Bowl, but we're not gonna pick that game today. We're gonna pick it. Uh, in the days leading up to that game, probably two weeks from now. We got uh, to enjoy Christmas first. Everybody. Yes, well, yeah, we need to enjoy the the, the pre New Year Six Bowls first. So let's go ahead and skip that game. Let's go ahead and head to the Camping World Bowl. Notre Dame and Iowa State. I didn't think Notre Dame was going to play Iowa State in the bowl game. I really, I thought honestly Notre Dame was probably going to go to the Orange Bowl or the Music City uh, Bowl. Rather would Notre Dame face us in the Orange. Mm. Yeah, I, I but I think that'd be a bad matchup. I think Notre Dame would cream. I mean, I think not Notre Dame. I'm sorry. I think Florida would cream Notre Dame in the Orange Bowl. But um, but I think this is a good matchup. Iowa State and Notre Dame. Uh, yeah, of course, Brock Purdy, two ninety five for four forty five over nearly four thousand yards, twenty seven touchdowns. Um, I was I'm sorry. Notre Dame actually is a three and a half point favorite. Over Iowa State, so who wins it, Notre Dame or Iowa State? Hey, the Cyclones, they are just they're an up and down team. They they get up, they play for big games, and then they they get up, they don't play for big games, and then they beat teams they're not supposed to beat, and they, they they're all over the place. Well balanced team, you gotta like Purdy, but I just think Notre Dame they're finally going to be playing a team that they're better in a bowl game, so I think Notre Dame's going to get the win here. And not to mention, this game is right down the road for me. I may be able to scout some tickets if I wanted to go, but... All right. Man, I wish Notre Dame would have played Florida instead of Virginia. That yeah. That would have been a good game, but... Yeah, but I'm I... I'm thinking the Irish here. Yeah, um... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with the upset. I'm taking the Iowa State Cyclones as three and a half dogs to pull the upset over Notre Dame. I mean, I want. Okay. I, I'm hoping Iowa State can end the year better this year. I really think they should have won. They, they should have beaten Iowa. I mean, come on, that one guy running to his own teammate, causing the muff punt, and then Iowa holds off and wins. That, that that's unreal on how that how game played out. It's, right. It was ridiculous. Especially with college game day there, that's probably had to be embarrassing. Uh, these next two bowl games are also New Year's Six, but not only that, they are your semifinal games. Of course, we are going to not pick those tonight. We're going to be picking them in the weeks ahead. Let's go ahead and skip to December the 30th. 
Um, the Surf Pro First Responder Bowl. By the way, this game, this first pro, uh, Surf Pro First Responder Bowl was in the first quarter. Boise State just scored their first touchdown. And all of a sudden, the sky opened up. They started pouring. And then they said, you know what? We're just going to cancel the game. Uh, nobody wins. And uh, yeah, uh, that, that, was, that was just the most boring bowl game of the year for sure. Just because of that rain delay. But uh, anyway... This game is being played this time at Gerald J. Ford Stadium, home of the Mustangs of SMU, uh, between Western Kentucky and Western Michigan. Uh, Western Kentucky is a two and a half point favorite. So who wins it, um, Broncos or Hilltoppers? Uh, I'm gonna go with Western Kentucky. In this one, uh, no really specific reason. I'm yeah. Looking, both teams are very well balanced, very even in stats, but I mean. I just think the defense of Western Kentucky is going to show up in this one. Yeah, I'm going to agree with you. I'm going to go with the Hilltoppers just because, I mean, this team looks stacked. I mean, 8-4, and four, not a bad year. I'm going to go with the Hilltoppers. The Franklin American Mortgage Music City Bowl, Mississippi State and Louisville. Surprisingly, Mississippi State makes it to a bowl game because of what, because of what um, Elijah Moore did, uh, peeing in the end zone. In the Egg Bowl for Ole Miss, um, I guarantee, I guarantee Mississippi State was going to lose that ball game. Had that penalty not happened, had that missed kick not happened, I guarantee you Mississippi State will not be here. But anyway, the Bulldogs of Mississippi State and the Cardinals of Louisville, there's no spread on this game, by the way. I don't see one. So anyway, who wins it, Cardinals or Bulldogs? Uh, both teams just desperate for a win. Mississippi State, I mean, they – that Mississippi State's back to being exactly where they were before Dan Mullen got there, all right? That just mm-hmm. shows how much Mullen did for that program. It's hard to win there. It's hard to win. It's brutal SEC. But I got to go with the SEC versus the ACC matchup here. I'm going with the Bulldogs in this one to get the close victory. Um, I'm actually – I'm going to go with – I'm going to agree with you. I'm going to go with a Mississippi State um, I just because, I mean, they shouldn't be here, but I think they're going to end the year – um, with a 7-6 to six record, a winning season for Coach Moorhead. Um, <clears throat> the Red Box Bowl at Santa Clara and Levi Stadium. A t- uh, California taking on a team that I don't think anybody thought was going to make it to a bowl game this year. The Illinois Fighting Illini are back in the bowl game for the first time in who knows how many years. But the Fighting Illini and the Golden Bears of California, who wins it, uh, Cal or Illinois? Can you believe that if Illinois did not upset Wisconsin early? They weren't going to make it. They wouldn't have made a bowl. That's, hey, that's absolutely astounding to me. And that just shows on how much that program is not ready to be consistent. And, and man, they're, they're still not good. I'm going to go with Cal on this one only because they, they're a program that knows how to win. I mean, uh, no specific reason this one. I just find that astounding that Illinois, despite having one of the best upsets on the season, is still a 500 team. I just, yeah, I'm actually. Tells me <clears throat> that. Uh, and like I said, there and also this game has no spread. But um, if there was a spread, I guarantee California will be the favorite. I'm actually going to go with the upset. I'm picking Lovey Smith and the Illinois Illini. I just love Coach uh, Lovey Smith. I think that's who's coaching the Illini. Uh, he's one of my favorite coaches. Um, and, of course, Illinois will finally get that ball win they've been wanting for so long in their first appearance back in who knows how long. So I'm going to go with the upset. Illinois over the fighting uh, over the uh, Golden Bears. Uh, of course, uh, next bowl game, of course, is the uh, Capital One Orange Bowl. And like I said before, I am not. we're not picking this game tonight. We're picking it another time. Um, uh, Tuesday, December 31st. Virginia Tech and Kentucky at the Belk Bowl at Bank of America Stadium in Charlotte, North Carolina. The Hokies and the Wildcats. Last, um, last, uh, last stand for um, for uh, Bud Foster as defensive coordinator for Virginia Tech. Uh, this will be his last game, being the defensive coach for the Hokies. So who wins it, Kentucky or Virginia Tech? <coughs> uh, I'm gonna say Virginia Tech just just for that is their coach's last hurrah. And yeah, seniors, they're gonna have something to play for, you know. They they love their coach. They're gonna play for. Well, it's coach. defensive and coordinator, defensive coordinator. He's been yeah. there. For, yeah, he's been still, there. Yeah. Still, man, they're they're gonna show up. He's been there for a while, so they're they're gonna show up and they're gonna want to get a W for their 
coordinator. You know, he's still their coach. Yeah, I'm gonna agree with you. I like Coach Foster. I think that he's gonna end his last game with a with one more win. So I'm gonna take the Hokies to take down the Wildcats. Uh, sorry, SEC, but I gotta go with one of the legends in the sport. <clears throat> now here's a bowl game that. I didn't think the Sun Bowl would have a sponsor for this. I, or at least I didn't think they'd have a sponsor like this. The, Can you believe the, 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 Wait, the Tony the Tiger Sun Bowl in El Paso, Texas, featuring Florida State and Arizona State. Arizona State's a five-and-a-half point favorite. Uh, who is going to win it, Seminoles or Sun Devils? My question for you is why Tony the Tiger and why not just Frosty Flakes Sun Bowl? I, I thought Tony the Tiger why disappeared. I thought he disappeared. I have no clue. Maybe he's making a comeback. I don't know. That being said, Florida State stinks. <laughs> Herm Edwards is building something. I'm riding the Herm Edwards train on this one. Even if it wasn't Florida State, I'd be picking Herm Edwards to win this bowl game. Got that marquee win against Oregon, took them out of the college football playoffs. And Michigan State. I love what Herm is doing at ASU. Well, I'm going to say and Michigan State as well, but let's be honest, Michigan State is not the team that everyone thought they were going to be this year. But uh, I'm going to agree with you. I like Herm Edwards. Um, I'm going to I'm going to take the Sun Devils over the Seminoles and the Tony the Tiger Sun Bowl. Still don't know why it's called Tony the Tiger, but. Ridiculous. Um, I, I, I think I, I, I like Tony the Tiger. Offensive line is terrible, and Arizona State has got a good rush. I mean, I, I mean, and I, good rush pass or, and a good pass defense too. So I mean, I like the I like Tony the Tiger. That is my childhood, man. Uh, what, what? How did it go? Um, how did that? Uh, 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 dang it, I can't remember how that rhythm goes. I'm just saying, I like the little paper clip, but whenever I think Microsoft Office, I think yeah, software. Something mighty mighty Tiger, something like that. Whatever it is. But anyway, um, 2.45 Central Time. Navy um, taking on Kansas State. Of course, we just picked Army-Navy. Um, I picked Army to win. KJ3 picked Navy to win. Um, uh, their next game after Army-Navy will be at the, Liberty, at the Liberty Bowl, a stadium I visited over this past summer, to take on the Kansas State Wildcats. Uh, who wins it? Uh, Midshipmen or the Cats? Tell you what. K-State's a good team, all right? Yeah. Kansas State, man. I mean, they uh, beat Oklahoma. Oklahoma. They dang near beat Texas. And they also upset Ohio, Iowa State in their last outing. Yeah. I'm going to go with Kansas State in this one. Wow. They're, they're going to pull off and get the victory. I don't know if – I can't remember the last time <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> that Kansas State played against a triple option team like Navy. I gotta go with the team that runs the triple option better than anybody. I'm gonna go with Ken Niamatololo and the midshipmen of the Naval Academy in this one, and also because fittingly it's called the Liberty Bowl. I mean, that's just, it's just, <laughs> it's fitting. But anyway, the Nova Home Loans Arizona Bowl, um, Wyoming Cowboys and the Georgia State Panthers. What a year for Georgia State! I mean, seven to five. That's not bad at all if you're a Georgia State fan. I mean, you beat Tennessee at the start of the season. And then you sort of stumble uh, down the uh, along the way, but now here you are, seven and five, uh, going on against another seven and five team. Uh, Wyoming's a seven point favorite heading into this game. So who wins it, Panthers or Cowboys? I'm gonna go with the Cowboys. You know they've been up and down this year. Got you know the opening week win against Missouri, which was shocking to me, but. Mm-hmm. You know, they almost beat a ranked Boise State, and, you know, Boise State only has one loss all year long, and then they had to play Air Force, unorthodox. <coughs> a couple losses there, I think they're better than what their record shows, so I'm going to go with Wyoming in this one, and, uh, yeah, I mean, he's just, this is Valaday. That guy has 221 carries, over 1,000 yards, so... Look for them to try to ground and pound the ball here. I'm actually going to disagree with you. I am going with um, Georgia State because of one guy. Um, whoever that – I cannot remember. The, Sean Elliott. I'm going with Sean Elliott. He's a former SEC coach. Of course, that was when South Carolina was in their downtime in 2015. But let's face it, he's an SEC guy. I got to go with this with the Deep South team. I'm going to go with Georgia State. And besides, I've seen Georgia State's campus. I mean, it's not bad. I mean, it's in the city of Atlanta. So I'm going to go with Georgia State to beat the Cowboys. This will be their second bowl win should Georgia State win. The Valero Alamo Bowl in San Antonio, Texas. The Utah Utes going up against the Texas Longhorns. 
Um, who wins it, Utah or Texas? By the way, the Utes are a seven-point favorite. How are they only a seven-point favorite? They're, they're eleven and two. Texas is seven and five. No. Texas is seven and five. Well, Texas Sam Allen. Two losses. How are they only a seven-point? Well, favorite? Sam Ellinger. Uh, I'm guarantee he he ate his own words from last year. He said. After so he, he, I mean, you think? I mean, he said it on the stage in New Orleans, Louisiana last year after beating Georgia, like they just won the national championship. He's like, "We're back, and look where that, yeah, y'all back to mediocrity again." So, um, when Tyler, Tyler Swoop said that overtime run and the announcer screamed, "Texas is back!" Yeah, that was like yep. four years ago too. I'm tired of people saying Texas is back. <laughs> yes. Let us say it. Don't say it yourself. All right? Exactly. Yeah. And- I'm surprised that, that has not become. Said, I'm surprised that has not become a meme yet. That being said, I see Utah wanting revenge from getting thoroughly embarrassed and taken out of their playoff. Yeah. By Oregon, Utah's getting revenge. Texas is inconsistent. U- Utes on this one. Yeah, um, I'm gonna agree with you. I'm gonna take Utah. Um, just because I I cannot stand Sam Ellinger now for eating his now he's eating his own words after what he said on the stage last year in the Superdome, but uh, uh Man, they should have beat LSU to open the year too. Choke. They should have yes. Uh, by the way, that was the that's the last game of the 2019 calendar year. Let's head over to 2020 New Year's Day, January 1st, the Outback Bowl. The Minnesota Golden Gophers and the Auburn Tigers. This will be the first time, surprisingly, the first time Auburn and Minnesota have ever met in college football. Can you believe that? Uh, that these teams have never met. I don't know a thing about Minnesota's tradition other than, you know, the, the Golden Gophers. They got some bald-headed guy. They got they got some bald-headed guy yelling, row the boat, wearing a pullover with a uh, with a suit and tie. He looks like, you know what he looks like to me? You know what? You know what he looks like to me? He looks like one of those um, churro cart guys in Mickey's Toontown. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I, I'm just, I know I'm pulling jokes early. Jim Trestle sweater vest yeah, I mean, I mean, I'm, I mean, I know I'm already pulling jokes on Minnesota, but I, mean, I have a great deal of respect for the Golden Gophers. I don't know much about them other than, you know, they used to be a team back when um, four, Model T Fords were popular. So anyway, uh, who wins it? Tigers or Golden Gophers? Oh, man. Oh, buddy. I know, I know what channel I'm on right now. It is called War Eagle, but row the boat, my man. No. Row You're the not... boat. I am drinking what PJ Fleck is giving me. That guy has amazed me. Wow. The dude can coach, man. Yeah, I, I, he can coach, yes. My goodness. But can he... He's only got two losses building up a program. But here's a question. He wins. One of those was the... Iowa, so I mean. But let me ask you this: Can he? Co- man, it was he got his Penn State win. Yeah, but let me ask you this: Can he coach against an SCC team? He's never done it before. He's never done that. I I just don't know. It's, it's, it's hard. It's hard. I I love PJ Fleck, but I do think I think that this will be the game where he'll break through. Man, he's faced. He's faced a good coach in Iowa. He's faced a good coach in Wisconsin. And he faced a good coach at Penn State, not to forget to mention. And he faced good coaches, James Franklin, Penn State. He Mm -hmm. got the Penn State win. He was at home. That, you know, home crowd definitely helped out in that one. But I think he was going to end the season with a win here over the Wow. I think you guys are way too happy. You beat Bama. Your Iron Bowl was your bowl game, guys. Minnesota just lost to Wisconsin. They want to go out on a high note. You guys are already riding high. I just yeah. see the boat being rowed here. Minnesota. All, all right. Day. Well, hey. I think it'll be close. I am the. I'm so excited for this game. Yeah. I, the college football playoff. Yeah. This is the game that I am most looking forward to this bowl season. I mean, everyone's saying it. I've heard people say it, too. This game, Auburn-Minnesota, I think it's going to be the, one of the other best bowl games of the season. But let me tell you this. I mean, yeah, P.J. Flex is going to be rowing that boat. Yeah, row that boat into that um, iceberg of a defensive line like Derek Brown and Marlon Davidson. By the way, 
I think you gotta think about this though. Marlon Davidson, Derrick Brown want to leave Auburn, not just with a win over Alabama, but they want to win with one last bowl win to their resume. They want to leave Auburn as men, and they want to do it over a Big Ten opponent like Minnesota. Um, of course, last time Auburn played a Big Ten opponent, uh, they absolutely shellacked Purdue. But let's be honest, Purdue was just Purdue. But um, of course, by the way, I was at that game last year. But Man, I just don't know if Minnesota can do good against Auburn's defensive line. I mean, yes, the secondary is awful, but they got to get by the defensive oh, line first. Monster. That monster, man. He's going yeah. to go. Yeah, PJ, yeah, you got to think about this, though. They're rowing the boat. Yeah, they're going to row, like I said, they're going to row the boat into the iceberg called our Auburn defensive line. Keep in mind, Florida had no run game, and we still got you guys, too. So you can play yeah. around one dude, but. Yeah. Can P.J. Fleck pull it off against Gus Melton? And, and by the way, Auburn is a seven and a half point favorite over the Minnesota Golden Gophers. I think it's gonna be closer than the experts think, but uh, it will give be me a field goal game. I'm gonna I'm gonna take Auburn because I mean, like I said, Derek Brown, Marlon Davidson, Big Cat Bryant, uh, Prince, Tug, whatever his last name is, he's Nigerian. So uh, I'm gonna go with Auburn. Obviously, I'm an Auburn fan, but I, I mean, I just. I want Derek Brown and all those guys to go out with one final victory to the resume. Um, just about 90 miles away from Tampa. This is going to be funny because Auburn and Alabama are playing the same time, same state, 90 and nearly 100 miles away from each other. But meanwhile, in Orlando, Florida, at the VRB, is it Verbo or Varbo, VRBO? I don't know. Let's just call it the Citrus Bowl. Let's just call it the Citrus Bowl. Um, the Michigan Wolverines and the Alabama Crimson Tide. This is the first meeting since the 2012 season opener. By the way, Alabama not only not in the playoff for the first time since it was uh, started, but it's the first time Alabama will not be participating in a New Year's Six Bowl since this Citrus Bowl against Michigan State back in 2011. No. New Year's Day 2011. Um, Alabama is a seven-point favorite <coughs> over the Wolverines. Uh, Shea Patterson, I think this will be his last game. Uh, I think he's a senior, but who wins it, Wolverines or Alabama? You know what? By the way, there's some beef between Nick Saban and Jim Harbaugh from a couple years ago. Yeah, this is just, I I don't know what to say with Michigan anymore. <clears throat> they they look like they turned the corner, and then they just got shellacked against Ohio State. Like mm -hmm. it was fifty six twenty seven, man. It wasn't close, not close at all. And I just think Nick Saban's going to be too pissed off to let his team forget that he's not in the New Year Six, man. Like I think Nick Saban is furious. That was the wake up call. The fact that the college football playoff is going to, you know, the semifinals are going to be played at this time already. Yeah. This is on New Year's Day. Yep. I just think Nick Saban's going to be too pissed to let his team not show up 100%. And Jim Harbaugh is just not the guy to win big games. I, I'm, I'm starting to think Jim Harbaugh is not the guy to bring Michigan back to winning the national title. He can have them at two or three losses every year and maybe get a win against Ohio State one yeah. out of every seven. Man, he's not what everyone thought he would be. He's just not, alright? Yeah. He's been there three full seasons hmm. now. He's, he's still still can't get it done against Ohio State. And it wasn't close. Yeah. He finally had a team that was at least had a chance. He was at home. Yeah. You know, like, I don't get it. I think Nick Saban's going to outcoach him. 